you and you. Um, if we make him, uh, there you go. For kid folk, will you sit and do us a prayer tonight? You don't mind. Let's bow our head in prayer. <laughs> Heavenly Father, most gracious and all wise God, Lord, we. You muted yourself, Brother James. There you go. Heavenly Father, most gracious and all wise God. You've been muted again. Lord, we thank you for allowing us to come together to study your word tonight, Father. We pray right now for each and every one that's on the line and those that may be on the way, Father. And I pray that you help them to make it safely, Father. I pray for your guiding hand over each and every one. At the sound of my humble voice today, I pray for answered prayer in each and every life tonight, Father. I pray that you guide us by your word, by your power, and by the love of Jesus Christ Almighty and the power of the Holy Spirit. Lord, open up our hearts and minds that we be receptive to your word tonight, Father. Guide us by your word, by your power, and by your spirit, Father. And we'll be forever grateful to give you glory and honor to your name and to your kingdom. Look on those that are unable to attend tonight. Look on those that are in the hospital and convalescent homes and institutions. Look on those that are confined to their homes and beds tonight, Father. And we pray that you just bless them. Open up hearts and minds that people be receptive to your word tonight. And we'll be forever grateful to give you glory and honor to your name and to your kingdom. In Jesus' name, we just say thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you again, folks. We praise God for you. Wonderful, wonderful prayer. We're yet praying for our president. Uh, she's doing a little better, and we just keep her in our prayers and all the others. Amen. Tonight, um, Sister Angie talked to me um, on Sunday, and she had something on her heart. She asked me, would it be okay? And I said, I'll think about it. And I thought about it, and I said, you know what? If the Lord put this on her heart, why don't we go along with it? And so we uh, got the word back to her and said, go for it, Sister Andy. Whatever direction the Lord is leading you, you're our teacher. Go for it. And so we thank God tonight. And let me just say this. Uh, we had a, a lesson that was not put in our books. The last lesson for, what is it, August for August. It was not in our books. And so Sister Angie had a good time to come up with God has given her since she's teaching tonight. And I don't know if this is her heading, but the believer's vote counts. I'm just going to use that, Sister Andrew. You can change it any way you want to. Our mm -hmm. background scriptures, these are scriptures that she, the Lord has given her and she's come up with. Background scripture with Matthew, the fifth chapter, the 13th through the 16th verse. Romans, the 12th chapter. Uh, the second verse, Ephesians, the sixth chapter, the 12th verse, and then 10 through 18. Um, then we have John 17, chapter 16 through 20, Philippians 3 and 20, 1 John 1 and 7, Romans 13, one, the first verse and the second verse, uh, Romans 3 the second through the fourth verse in Acts 4 and 18. For devotional reading, we have Psalms um, 62, 5 through 12, and Revelations 4, 7, and 11. And we thank God. Central verse she gave us, James 5 and 17. She set it up exactly the way they do it in the prayer and Bible band. And so, Sister Angie, we thank God for you on tonight and she has some things that she's going to do and we're just saying lord bless her and what she's doing you gave it to her and just give her uh what to give us tonight and sister angie you just go as the lord leads you and we thank god for you at this time you're in the hands of our teacher sister angela smith thank you thank you thank you pastor cotton um Thank you so much and for uh, allowing me this opportunity and approving this lesson. His approval is on this lesson. So, 
<laughs> and so I thank you. Give honor to God and to uh, our pastor, first lady, our, our uh, uh, mother of peace, our, our um, elder Russian, and to each and every one of you that are on Zoom with us tonight for this Bible lesson. And um, I was trying to say our church mother, Mother Peace. I couldn't get that, the title in there, but she's, but anyway, to all of you, and I see you all, and, and I'm waving to you all, and you can wave back. I'm not, I'm going to get right on into this lesson. God bless you. Uh, so um, our topic, uh, I sent Sister Sydney a, a, a text, if you can give me the share. Um, you already the, have it. Oh, thank you, Sister. Um, our topic, as the pastor of Red, is... Uh, the believers vote and I'm going to start this off with with a video that uh, pastor encouraged me uh, sent to me and we're using this so he's in on it too he we're using this as our jumping off point I guess uh, for lack of a better word okay so we're gonna first look at this video listen to everything that said is very short but take Take a few notes because I'm actually going to be using what's being said in here as part as much as uh, for much of our lesson. All right. So let's get right on into it. And uh, again, greetings, <laughs> everyone. Amen. And that was the, the voice of our presiding bishop. Did you all recognize his voice? That was the voice of our presiding bishop. So if our presiding bishop of the Church of God in Christ said, go vote, guess what we got to do? Obey. We're going to go vote. But we're going to look at some, some scriptures tonight and some word. And that, and that was very, very good uh, 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 start for this lesson. Now, this lesson is not about who you're voting for, or who I'm voting for, but it's to encourage you to get out and vote. And that and, and the encouragement, I want to not only just encourage you to get out and vote, but I want to give you scriptures to encourage you to feel good about getting out and feel um, that is all right for you to get out and vote in Jesus name. That is all right for you to to um, let your voice and your vote be heard. Amen. So. Um, bear with me. I'm, I, for some reason, I'm having runny eyes and it's making me blur, but we're going to go through this. I'm going to our lesson. I'm going to put on the screen for, uh, for a while. And so you can follow uh, a few things. I'll take it off so I can see you again. And you can see us again and, 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 and back and forth. And I hope I don't make you dizzy. I'll, I'll try not to do it too much. <laughs> okay, let's see. Here's our lesson. Some There's a lot of things I can't get off the screen. Okay. So our lesson is the believers vote. The believers vote counts. And uh, take take some notes. I hope you have pen some paper because I'm not going to leave this on the screen the whole time. And you want to be able to stay up with me. But... Um, we just watched the video, and as I said, that was the video of uh, our presiding bishop. And and the name of the video, um, for those who, who are on the phone and probably couldn't actually see the video, um, is Kojix, C-O-G-I-C, we call, we, it's Kojic, Church of God in Christ, but use Kojic Counts, okay, Kojic Counts. Is, was the name of the video and then your voice your vote I believe that's um, what I picked up for so if you want to do a search and, and, and go back and watch it I just wanted to share that with you all right in our background we're gonna we have several scriptures in our background and I'm not going to use all these scriptures and pastor the the um, the information I sent you um, is not uh, uh, some of the things have changed because I had to go over as I went and reviewed over, I said, oh, I must have went to sleep on as I was studying some of this because my numbers were off uh, as far as chapters and verses and some of them. And I was so glad I, I sat down 
and the, and, and double check. So it's, it, it may be a little, seem a little off, Pastor, but not too much. Okay. Go as the Lord leads you, Sister Andy. <laughs> okay, thank you. So um, to everyone, our background scriptures again, Matthews 5, 13 uh, through 16. And before we, uh, okay, those are scriptures, and so you can write them down. So when I get off the the uh, screen, you have them, and when I call them out. But um, Romans twelve and two, Ephesians six, ten to twelve, verse eighteen, John seventeen fifteen to twenty, Philippians three. Like I said, I may not be, most likely won't be using all of these, but these were just a lot of thoughts. And I just had to get them down. And so we'll see which way the Lord leads us. And just pray for me that the Holy Spirit will lead me. Because this is a very important, all of God's word and lessons are important. But I want to bring it to you in a way that when you get leave here, this class, you can say, I'm going to go vote. You know, I understand God's word and, and it's necessary even in the present situation and the choices that we have, you'll see. So Romans, uh, Philippians 3.20, 1 John 1, 7, Romans 1, Romans 13, chapter 1 and 2. Okay, and then also Acts 4.17. Uh, let's go, um, before I go any further, I want to, um, as I want us to read our, and I can scroll down, our introduction. To bring us into this lesson okay so those that are with me and you can see this i can i can use a lot of help in the reading of the introduction anybody want to read the introduction at least start do that first paragraph i can read it sister Angie. okay thank you sister. Oh. renell mm-hmm This me now. Go ahead. Mm -mm. Did you go on mute? <laughs> Unmute yourself, Sister Renell. There you go. Okay. Okay. So I, I just gotta move you out the way, Pastor. Start over. Uh -huh. Off of the. Okay, I'll do the first paragraph. Um, our faith calls us to be the salt of the earth influencing our society for good. Our presiding bishop said, your voice is noted by your vote. Proverbs 3, verse 5 through 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. Jesus said, you are the salt of the earth, but if the salt has lost his faith flavor, how, just had to move you up. Okay, lost his flavor. Is it fame flavor? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, flavor. How can it be salted or it again? If we do nothing, our faith is good for nothing. James chapter 2, verse 26. Remember, your voice matters. Jesus said, if they shall keep silent, the stones would immediately cry out. Luke chapter 19, verse 39 through 40. The souls to the poles campaign. My, my, my screen is not scrolling. Somebody, oh, let me just do this last one and someone else can take. Oh, okay. The souls of the poles campaigned by the Church of God in Christ is committed to making every voice heard as we believe in the power of our community and spread the word. Hebrews chapter 13, verses 13 through 16, and verse 18. The bishop said, our voice is more important than ever. And here's how you can get involved. One, register to vote. Two, spread the word. Three, plan your vote. Remember, every vote counts. All right. I, that's, oh, that's it. That's good. That's good. That's good. Uh, we'll pick up uh, after a while. We'll pick up the rest after a while. So thank you, Sister Renell. Um, You're welcome. Our lesson in, in our introduction to bring us into our lesson, our faith, 
and the the uh, bishop talked about um, we are we are the salt of the earth, and he ind indicated what that means, and and, and we're also the light of the world. God's people bring life to this world, just like God brought life to us, Jesus through Jesus Christ. We are now carrying that life um, in this world. We are an influence and we are a light and our influence and our light is good. But that doesn't mean everybody's going to accept it. Amen. It's good. And so in our uh, time of election, there's a lot going on and a lot of uh, a lot of discomfort about about the election because nobody wants to live in a world where where uh, only the strong survive. Nobody wants to live in a world where where anybody is forgotten and left out. And then nobody wants to live in a world where the floodgates of evil is wide open and anything and everything can happen in spite of what God's word has to say. And so where do we stand on either side? And so, but God, God's word says we are to be an influence in this world. And in his word, we can't be ashamed to share God's word. And it's not that we're trying to tell somebody who you should vote for and who you shouldn't vote for. But we just want people to know the truth and let God deal with their hearts and let them make the decision for themselves. And that's where we are as for ourselves as, as well. But we know the word and we believe the word of God. So our influence is to be able to get out there and share the word of God and encourage people that yes we should vote we have to vote is um so um in proverbs we read proverbs uh three and our trust is in the lord our faith is in the lord we're going to believe that um and we're so we're not out here fearful in none of these situations we're not fearful because god is going to direct our path we trust in him our heart, it says, uh, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to our own understanding. And see, when we let all this stuff get into our heads and what's going on and what's being said and what are we going to do? Give it to the Lord and just say, Lord, what does your word say? How can I be comforted with your words? That's what all, that's all we need is comforting because, uh, we're, we're going to get into the scriptures and you're going to see what what more i have to say but um jesus um he he's the one if you read it in your bible those words should be in red that jesus said you are the light of the world so we're not just stepping out on our own we're out here on his word amen we're out here on his word and his protection and his care amen and so um our our central verse james 2 26 says as the body without the spirit is dead so faith without works is dead amen and and he's talking about our activities in this world to help to be light and and um salt in this world are we are we actively trying to let this world know that god loves us that he loves uh, John three sixteen that he loves the world and are we out trying to let people know that he gave his only begotten son and and that whosoever believed in him should not perish but have ever nice night but in believing in him we have to believe in his teachings and in his word and trust that's what it talked about we trust put our trust in the Lord and so while this world is up in 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 in, in the craziness of what's going on and and, and what, you know, what we're going to do. And, 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 and then the devil is getting into the mix and trying to make sides, put people on different sides. We have to just stay as we, uh, God has brought us this far as believers, the carriers of the truth. And if people will listen to the truth, you'll be able to make just like us. We're going to make some sound decisions based on God's word and his love for us because he cares for us. Amen. And so let's go to our first, um, some of our scriptures here. 
And so what else do we miss? So he said, said so in our lesson, is, um, in our introduction, it says, remember, your vote matters. Your vote matters. Uh, we have that key word. We have the word matters. It's, it take, it, it means something. It carries weight. Amen. Your vote matters. Don't forget that. So Jesus said, if they shall keep silent, the stones would immediately cry out. And so we don't want to keep silent. Listen, you're going to find out in these lessons, we have citizenship here, but we have a dual citizenship. We're also citizens of the kingdom of heaven. And as citizens of the kingdom of heaven, we're here to spread the word because God created this world and he created you and I, and he knows how it's supposed to go. And God has uh, commissioned us. Jesus has commissioned us to let the world know that God loves them and that he has a better plan for their lives and for our, just as he has for our lives. Amen. And so we don't, we always say, we don't want the stones to cry out for us. So we need to open our mouths. Amen. And let, and, and speak the word of truth into this fallen world. Amen. Um, this in, in, um, also it says, this is what the title, one of the titles of the video, the souls to the polls. Souls to the Post campaign by the Church of God in Christ is committed to making every voice heard as we believe in the power of community. Community coming together, one mind, one purpose. Amen. And 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 that and, and in this situation, in this hour, we're talking about voting because everyone needs to get involved in the voting. Um, let's, um, and you, and you see why, cause he said some other things and we're going to talk about it, but let's look at Matthew's, a few of our scriptures. And then we'll come back to, to this, what we just said, what we were reading here. Uh, Matthew's chapter five. And that's where we talked about, I've already talked about it. So um, I've already talked about it. We are the light of the world. Amen. But, uh, but the thing is, what it says is, ye are the light of the, I mean, you are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses his fa fa savor, wherewith shall it be salted? You know, how is it going to become salty again? So what is it talking about? If we hold our peace and, and keep our mouths shut and don't share and don't show the world that there's a better way, that God is true and he's real, and we're talking about the true and the living God. If we don't have a word to tell people, then, and we're just going on as if, you know, there is no word, there is no help, there is no uh, hope, then we've lost our saltiness. We can't help anybody. We have no influence. So we have to use our words. We have to use our voices. We have to use our actions. And then, and, and, and as being a light, huh? We have to be out there in the world. We have to allow ourselves to be seen doing good and helping people because that's what Jesus came and that's what he did. All we have to do is follow, read the gospels and see what kind of a man Jesus was in this sinful world and knowing that only God can be that kind of a person and we want to be like Jesus. Amen. And so we have to be the light and the salt. So we have to hold this world up. One day God is going to take us out of this world, take the body of Christ, the church out of this world and oh, 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 no more prayer. Who's going to pray for them? Who's going to witness to them? Who's going to testify? Who's doing it now? It has to be us. We're the only ones that have the word of truth. Amen. And so um, what I'm saying is, uh, I know you're looking for more information about the voting, but what I'm trying to do is encourage you to stay your ground as a believer, no matter what you hear or see in this world is going on. Amen. So let's go on to Romans 12. Romans 12 and 2. 
those who have um, written written down those scriptures, if you want to get there quickly, 12 and 2 says, and be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. God has a will. He has a desire. He has a plan for this world and for you and me as individuals. And but then we have to get into his word and all that and all that um, falsehood and all that troubling stuff that we've learned that was apart from God's word. We have to renew our minds. We have to renew our minds. And we think education is the only thing that, that's going to uh, get us through and make us through. But there's more to this world and to our walk with Christ than education. We need to know, we need to be educated in God's word. And he, Paul often said he wants us to be knowledgeable, to have the knowledge and the wisdom of that comes from God's word. And so um, I, I bring that out because how are you going to tell them? How are you going to tell them unless you know the word of God and it says, and, and your life has been transformed because if we're out there, they're seeing us, they're looking at us. Amen. And so how can you tell them if you're living the same kind of untowards life as they are, who's going to listen? All right. And so, um, so he says that he says, Ye may prove uh -huh, our renewing of your mind. That's the only way we're going to prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God by getting into his word and knowing what he wants us to share, being able to not just know it, but to share it. That's what we're talking about today, sharing the word. All right. So Ephesians. In the book of Ephesians, chapter uh, 6, we have verses 2, verses 10 and 12, and then verses 18. And, and uh, verses 10 says, Finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might, putting on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. We're in this world. I, like I said, we have dual citizenship and, and the first citizenship until Jesus, our Savior, come and takes us out of here. We're, you, we are uh, citizens of this country, of this United States country. Amen. And, the, and, and so, and uh, it says, put on the whole armor of God. So, and, and we know uh, in our, in our, in our uh, laws or in our, um, I'm losing my thought that this world was said to be one nation under God, and they still they still have it in in our, in the writings and and in in our currency. I believe if you look at it, it still says trust in God. We trust in God, Amen. And so, if that's so, in this world, we still know that the devil is busy, and that we have to be ready. For his attacks, because even as Jesus went about talking and, and sharing and preaching the word of truth, he was stirring up trouble in the hearts of evil people, in the hearts of man. They didn't want to see it. This is the condemnation that man love darkness rather than light because why? Their deeds are evil. And so they don't want to hear. But we have to be ready and realize we have to understand that, um, not everybody's going to accept our preaching and our, and our teaching and the word of God, the truth. Not everybody's ready to uh, hear it. And so in verse 18, it says, praying always with all prayer and supplications in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplications for all saints. So we have to have each other's back. We got to be all dressed, ready for the battle our full armor on, but we have to still, and that's why we have to communicate, come together and, and um, worship together, talk about God's word together, fellowship, because we have to be one 
in, in our hearts and in our minds of God's word and in Christ Jesus. Amen. And so this world, so this world can't take us down because huh? we're going to be, a, we're strong. We're strong in the Lord. Amen. He said, finally, my brother, and be strong. It says, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. So he's going to help us. Amen. He's going to be with us. He's, he's, he's going to be leading this army. Amen. And all we have to do is, is prepare ourselves in the way that he has given us instructions to prepare. All right. So what am I talking about? Why, why aren't we talking about uh, voting? I want to talk about voting. Don't pout. We're going to get to that. Okay. Because what we need to know as believers is that we need to know how to stand after doing all the stand in these evil days. Amen. And so God, I'm here to share, to, to impart God's word to you that so you can toughen up, so you can toughen up, so you can make a sound decision, so you can say no to this and no to that and, and know what to say, what to, um, uh, how to carry yourself among the people who are saying yes to the things that God's word is saying no to. Amen. All right. So, um, let's go on to our next scripture. And so in 18, it says we have to be prayerful, praying for one another. We have to have each other's back. We're making prayers, making requests. Um, it's, it's not a cut and dry situation for any of us. So we're praying, we're making requests and we're praying in the spirit because the spirit knows what we ought to pray. Even if we don't know the spirit makes it intercession for us amen and watching therefore we have to watch and pray i believe jesus even said that watch and pray with all perseverance and supplications for all the saints because we are all in this together no man is an island amen our next scripture you, you're gonna get this after one just follow me Draw lines as we go. Next scripture, 17th chapter of John. John 17. Now this I want to show you. I, I mentioned dual citizenship, right? I want to show you something. I want to show you something. Um, and Jesus left us here for a reason. We are ambassadors. Anybody know what an ambassador is? We represent our heavenly home. In this earth, Amen. And in in, in um, John fifteen and through twenty, let's see. That's a lot of reading. If I can just um, seventeen, John seventeen fifteen, it says, "I this is Jesus now, and this is Jesus's prayer for himself that he may be glory uh, be glorified back to the Father." It's his prayer for his disciples, and it's also his prayer for those who are who have come and after his disciples it says in verse 15 i pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil jesus prayed jesus praying to the father for his people that god has given him because he mentioned earlier, oh, god you you have given them to given them to me and i have kept them in the world and now that I'm leaving, I ask that you will keep them in the world. Don't take them out yet. They got work to do. <laughs> Don't take them out. Um, they are, now this is it. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. We've been born again. We've been born of the spirit. We're spirit beings. Amen. In a body still because that's uh we're living on the earth and we need an earthly uh, earth suit to stay here but we have a spirit that the world can't doesn't have and that is the spirit of god living in us and making us a new creation in christ jesus okay go down to <clears throat> As thou has sent them at 18 says as thou has sent me into the world even so have I also sent them into the world. See, Jesus has given us 
a commission. And just like he said, he is the light of the world. Now he's saying you are the light of the world. Amen. We are the salt of the earth. He's leaving us here. He said, just like God sent him here. Now he's about to leave. And, and, and he's saying that even so, I'm sending them into the world. Into the world. Wolves and uh, in sheep clothing into this world where people are out to steal, kill, and destroy because they're following the, their father, the devil. This is the world. So God, Jesus is asking God to keep them. Don't take us out because they have a work to do. Verse, all the way go, go down to verse, um, verse 20. And this is what he, this is what he's saying in verse 20. So uh, before verse 20, he's praying for his disciples, those that God has given him to disciple his disciples. He was their teacher. And now listen to this in verse 20. Neither I, um, neither I pray I for, for thee alone, for these alone, his disciples. I'm not just praying for these followers that you have given me, but for them also, which shall believe on me. What? Through their words, through their words. And this is how we got our new Testament Bible today through their words and, and, and it has been written down and God has preserved it for such time as this. And he will continue to pres preserve it because his, his word um, will last forever. Amen. Okay. So I just want you to see that Jesus prayed for us, but what I want you to get now, watch this uh, verse 16. They are not of this world. What world are we of? Go to Philippians. Philippians 3. And so the point is, what business do we have here then? If we're not of this world, we're ambassadors. We live here. We were born in this country. We have the rights of this country to vote. And think about it. Our, our forefathers, our foreparents, huh? they fought for us to have this right to vote. They made, they fought for us. It, it wasn't always for us, but they fought and they stood up and they made it happen. They made it happen. And some of them didn't get a chance to see it happen, but a, a lot of our, uh, maybe down to, uh, two or three generations, uh, our parents and grandparents may have, but it was fought for it. We, we stood up for it. So I thought when I thought about this, I thought about, I thought about, um, Esau who sold his birthright. Don't sell your birthright. We were born in this country. We have a right to vote. Amen. And don't, and don't, uh, despise when you sell your birth, we sell out and don't do what our people has fought for years for us to have. And, and, and you just, don't do it and don't take advantage of it. That's like selling out and that's like despising all the work that they have done. But no, we live here too. And we have rights just like everybody else. And we have the right to vote and we want to use, we want to do just that. Amen. And so in verse um, Philippians 3, Philippians um, 3 verse 20, it says, uh, and for our conversation is in heaven. If you look at the NIV, that conversation, it says our citizenship is in heaven. From whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Heaven, we know that that's where our citizenship is. That's where our conversation is. That's who we talk. That's why we talk about it so much. We, it, it all, it all just roll off our tongue. That's what we need to be talking about. Heaven. Amen. And, and how to get there. Amen. And so, and so it says, this is, is our citizenship. That's where we reside in heaven, seated with Christ Jesus. Amen. The scripture says we are heirs and joint heirs with him. Amen. And so that's where our citizenship is. And then, but we're waiting for the redemption of our souls 
for the day that Christ comes and take us home when our work is done. Amen. You gotta finish the work. Amen. All right. So, um, so Jesus said, they're not from this world and we're finding out that our citizenship is in heaven, but we know that we're still here <laughs> on this earth. Amen. And Jesus left us this here to finish, to continue the work of preaching and teaching and letting people know that they can be saved. Saved from what? From the wrath of God that's going to come upon the children of disobedience. Amen. Moving right along. Let's go back to our reading because there's some things I want to pick up before our time is out. So we read our central verse. I pray that we get a chance to read our devotional, one of our devotionals, which is Psalm 62. But let's see. Uh, if not, please read the devotionals. I'll put it back on the screen. But right now, let's go back into our introduction. And um, we talked, um, let me bring it back on the screen for you. No, this one here. And so I'm, I'm at this part where um, it says the bishops, the bishops, our presiding bishops said, our vote is more important than ever. And here's how you can get involved. This was his suggestion. Here's how you can get involved. He says, register to vote. And he gave, and he gave the, uh, the church of God in Christ. It's, it's, he gave the um, information where you can go on the... <clears throat> on the Church of God in Crisis <clears throat> um, site and register. They give um, um, a simple and um, information as to how you can register if you haven't already done so. And he says, spread the word. And so what word is he talking about? Let people know that this is the season that we are about to our lives are about to go through a change and we are about to vote in a new president and we need everybody to vote. He says, spread the word. He says, go spread it to your family and your friends. He said, get on your social media, spread it to them. Let them know that you're voting and tell them the importance of voting because I'm, I'm thinking the, of the scripture that, that, that um, we are to pray for those that are in authority, that we may live quiet and peaceful lives. Amen. And so it, <clears throat> that's, that's not just in the presidency, that, but that's city, state, and country. And so anytime there's a, a ballot going on that's going to affect the lives of our, uh, or our livelihood, we need to vote, vote, and we need to spread the word. <clears throat> The more the merrier, amen? <clears throat> and the number three, he says, plan your vote. In other words, plan your vote. Either you do a mail-in, he said, either do the mail-in or do the, um, there was three different things he mentioned, mail-in or go directly to the polls. <clears throat> Excuse me. But plan it. Think about what you're doing and work it out and make sure you vote. Remember, every vote counts. Amen. Every vote counts. Um, let me scroll down. So that's pretty much our introduction. It says uh, words that were written in the comments of the video that we saw says, be sure to get registered, vote early, pray about it, and let your voice be heard this election season. 
is very important and is very important. But don't forget who you are in Christ Jesus. That's my word. Don't forget who you are in Christ Jesus. Get into your word. See what is true. See what is right. And listen to what the candidates are saying and, and, and weigh. That's all we can do is weigh the, weigh the situation, praying about it, and then do your voting and let God do the rest. Stop it, Missy. I'm sorry, my cat is attacking me. Missy. Okay. <laughs> this is terrible. All right. So our discussion. Key words. In our discussion, we're gonna move right along. I want you to know, I want you to uh work with these key words. And this is where I want you to get um Involved, give you the opportunity. You see the key words, significant, critical, vital, and matters. What matters to us? So let's talk about the word significant. Who knows what the word, who can give me a definition, your own definition for the word significant. Can you write those words down and I'll take this off the screen. You got it? I'll keep repeating it, okay? The first word is significant. Let's discuss why the, the bishops use the word significant. Her vote is significant. And so I'm opening up. I'm opening up the polls. <laughs> I'm opening it up so you can talk. The word, let's get the meaning of that word first. The word, the meaning of the word significant. Uh, significantly great or importance to be worthy of attention, noteworthy. All right. Something that's very significant. All right. Um, having particular meaning, indicatives of something, something that is significant. So in all of that definition, we know that what we're talking about voting is significant it is of great importance worthy of attention amen anybody else want to say anything on the word significant i'm using this as our discussion point and then we're moving almost done the next word <clears throat> did i see any hands the next word is critical whoa it's critical that we vote what is, why did he use such a word as that? Why is it critical? Give you Does a mean, go ahead. Mm -hmm. I mean, urgent. All right. Urgent. Important. 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 Anything else? Anybody else? It is critical that we get out and vote. It is critical that we spread the word. It is critical that we register. The voting will not happen. The counting of your vote will not happen if you don't get out there and do what needs to be done. It's critical because we need your vote. We need everyone to vote. Critical, expressing adverse or uh, critical, exp expressing adverse or disapproving comments of judgment. Uh, he was critical of many U.S. welfare programs. <laughs> so it's critical that um, we vote because there's a lot of issues that goes against the word of God. It's critical that we vote because even though on both sides there's a lot of issues that's against the word of God, we have to weigh and, 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 uh, and, and believe that God is going to lead us in the right direction, but we have to take advantage of our rights as U.S. citizens. And so God will take care of us. We read that, right? He'll take care of us. I'm not agreeing with, with all that they say, but this is all we have. I was hoping that God would, would send us a ram in the bush. <laughs> all of a sudden, somebody would show up that everybody would say, that's the one we won, you know. But we have to accept what we have, what's in front of us, amen, and do our best and believe that 
I, I, I'm, I'm about to go ahead of myself. No matter who gets in office, God is still on the throne. And whether they know it or not, whatever choices they make that affect us, that affect God's church, that affects this country in an un, in, in a unrighteous, unholy way, they have to answer to God. Amen. And so the weight is on their shoulders, not ours. We're doing what we're supposed to do. But I tell you, let's look at um, the next word in our uh, keywords, vital. These all words, all these words sound like they're the same, right? But they have significant meanings. They have significant meanings. When something is vital, what does that mean? Important. <laughs> yeah. Uh huh. Absolutely necessary or important. Essential. Essential. If I'm, I can't hardly pronounce it. You, you know. Yeah. Uh. All right. Anybody else? So these are the very words that our uh, presiding bishop used. These are the words that he used in trying to urge us to get out there, to let us know that we have to get out there and do what we, we are supposed to do as believers and as citizens of this United States and, and that we honor the fight that our four parents took up. And a lot of them suffered because of it. But here we are today. And we have a right. Let's take advantage of that right. Let's not despise what they have done by not, by just uh, giving in. The next word is matter. What does it matter? Matters. Uh, the definition, what, what we're talking about. <clears throat> The, the, the definition of something matters is that it is of importance, significant, of and consequential, consequential when something matters. See, it sounds like they're all the same, but as you use them in the right way, you'll find that you're really building, building on how great of an importance this matter is of a voting is amen it really is okay so in our introduction um also we see we read that i'm almost done i have a conclusion let's go to our con con conclusion um the word where am i here uh the last thing on the screen Here, um, here's a sentence I, I want to read. I don't know if we read it. The words that were written uh, in the comments, I did read that. Words that were now let's look at. Um, so I put our discussion was the key words. That was our discussion. Okay, so that wasn't that wasn't too bad. Uh, we just want to get a good understanding, but we want to stand for what is right amen we want to stand for what is right and people are going to be saying what about this or what about that i i can't we ourselves cannot control everything but we know who can control everything amen and who can put things in order and he as god is patient patiently and 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 what's the scripture in peter he talks about a thousand years to the Lord is one day, and one day is that a thousand years. He's talking about the patience of God. There's more people. There are people in this world just that, and we were just like them. More people can be saved. Our family members, there's too many people that just hasn't turned to God yet, and he is patient. But he's patiently waiting for us to do our job as well. We must be about our Father's business. So, in our conclusion... In our conclusion, Sister Angie, before you go there, Mother Peace has her hand raised. Oh, okay. I'm not in the screen. All right. Yes, ma'am. Please. 
you, I'm sorry, I was happy to wait until you finished. I didn't want to interrupt your conclusion. No, no, we, before we go to our conclusion, anybody else have, put your hand up. We're going to hear from Mother Peace first. Yes, ma'am. All right. All right. Thank you. <laughs> um, Mr. Angel, I have enjoyed every moment of tonight's study and discussion, and you opened every phase of, of this up so beautifully. I read every scripture that uh, you asked Pastor to send out and share with us. And for the first time in my voting life, uh, I, I have really uh, deep feelings about uh, the candidates. Um, I'm a Democrat. <laughs> um, I was raised by a serious, staunch, uh, Republican, my dad, F.W. Cotton. Um, and um, I remember when I was uh, coming close to uh, my voting choice, uh, we had quite a conversation about me choosing uh, to be a Democrat. Um, and here we are at this season of our lives. We are, we are blessed to be able to choose who, uh, what, what uh, side we want to be on and who we want to vote for. But there are so many issues around uh, both candidates. And let me just share my heart. I am really proud of uh, the, uh, the fact that Vice President Harris has come this far in her walk through life. It could not have been easy. A woman of color, I can't help but be proud of the fact that she's come this far. Um, we all know the history of Donald Trump. Um, and here we are with both candidates. And, and here I am telling you how proud I am of uh, Vice President Harris's trick. And I am. Uh, we didn't, some of us didn't believe that we'd ever see a person of color as vice president, let alone someone being presented that could possibly be the president of these United States. But there's been so much um, uh, in my spirit, in my mind, in my thoughts about what both sides um, are all about. And because I'm a Democrat, I'm really concerned about the person I want to vote for, who uh, has some some choices, some issues they uh, proudly raise a banner or two that goes against everything we know about what the Word of God says. So for the first time, I'm in a dilemma like I've never been. And when you added Romans 12 and 2 to your list of scriptures. And that verse of scripture says, be not conformed to this world. And we know the rest of that scripture. I said to myself in my own conversation with Marianne, are we conforming by supporting a candidate or any candidate who supports and raises a banner to something that is clearly not what God would uh, want us to be involved with, to choose to support. And then you said something tonight, um, and I've had discussions with other women of God. At the end of the day, God knows who's going to be the choice. But here we are being encouraged not to let our vote uh, be missed Somebody died so that we could vote. Uh, somebody was beaten so that you and I could vote. So it is with a heavy heart that I find myself even questioning whether or not I'm going to place my vote where I want to place it because my candidate, Vice President Harris, clearly supports same-sex marriage and abortions. 
I wouldn't vote for Donald Trump. I would rather vote for a kangaroo than Donald Trump. I'm just being honest. I'm not trying to be funny. He's not, he's not someone I would want to vote for. Um, that doesn't mean he shouldn't get a vote from anybody who chooses. I'm talking about Marianne Peace. So I, I just need to share that I'm in a dilemma. I don't want to waste a vote that somebody gave their life for. But because of what I know on both sides, Marianne Peace has deep feelings about which way to go. And I just needed to share that with the body. Amen. Thank you, baby. Amen, Mother Peace. Thank you for taking your time and sharing that with us. Amen. Pastor, if you don't mind us going over just a little bit, I do want to read Psalm 62, and we'll close with that. Um, no problem. We're already over anyway, so just go ahead. <laughs> okay. And, 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 and our central verse is uh, something that, that the bishop says, your vote matters and your voice. Your voice matters and your vote, vote is vital. That's the central verse. But let's look at, um, we'll start from verse 5 won't read the whole thing. We'll go all the way down. Verse 5, Psalm 62. I don't know uh, if this is going to speak to you the way it did to me, but it, 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 it spoke. It says, My soul waits thou only upon God, for my expectation is from him. He only is, he only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be moved. In God is my salvation and my glory, the rock of my strength, or my or and my refuge is in him. Trust in him at all times, ye people. Pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. Selah. Surely men of low esteem are vanity, and men of high degree are a lie. To be laid in the balance, they are altogether lighter than vanity. Trust not in oppression, and, beco and become not vain in robbery. If riches increase, set not your heart upon it. God has spoken once, twice has I, twice have I heard this, that power belongs unto God. As unto oh. thee, O Lord, belong mercy. For thou renders to every man according to his works. So it's in God's hands, saints. And we're just marching. We're not agreeing. But there are other things on the ballot. And we don't have to like anything. But he says that we pray for them. That we may lead quiet and peaceful life. Because these decisions, whoever we pick, is going gonna, is gonna to mess. Is going to change our whole trajectory, as they say. And... Um, but God has the reins of whoever going to be in there. And that's what we're trusting in. That's what we're trusting in. And so when we vote one way or the other, it's, uh, it, see, the meaning of the voting is, is it, it seems as though we're agreeing, agreeing, but we have to agree with God's word that we are to, to, uh, I, I didn't even read one of the one of the scriptures. We are to obey God rather than man. So I'm not agreeing with everything. And we make that no, we make that declaration. We're saying I'm not agreeing with everything that they're putting out there. But this country does need a president. This country does need a leader. So and, and so, like I said, th there's a lot on both sides. And God is going to do the rest. You do what you do. And, and as you read this, uh, we have a hiding place in God, a refuge. He is our refuge and our strength, a very present help in the time of trouble. 
So um, I hope this lesson helped. I, I hope it at least got you started to thinking. You know, it may not have answered all your questions. And so, um, but God has the answer. So that's why we were reading the part that says, pray, make your request known. Amen to God. So at this time, I'm going to give you back into the hands of our pastor. I believe it seemed like there was one other thought, but it, but it, but it's out of time and it's not crucial. <laughs> so pastor, it's in Amen. your hands. <laughs> God bless you, Sister Andy. The essential thought that she wrote down you know, was your voice, your vote. Your voice, your vote. And we wanted to be uh, noted that uh, on this lesson tonight, and with, with our teacher tonight, even with Mother Pete, we're not telling you who to vote for. You pray about it, look at it, the situation, ask God and let God direct you. But your voice and your vote does count. So we thank God and uh, I don't like me personally, just like Mother Peace. I don't care for any one of the candidates, but I got to make a decision. What am I going? So we we thank God for you all tonight, Sister Angie. What a marvelous, marvelous job you done on tonight. Let's give her a hand. God bless my you. goodness, my goodness, Sister Angie. Thank you, Pastor. God bless you. You've done a wonderful job. You whole thing together. Because you said God gave it to you. And you know what? I'm so glad that I didn't get in the way. Praise the Lord. Amen. It was marvelous. Praise and the Lord. I appreciate what you've done. It was marvelous. It was good. It was excellent. Just out of nowhere. Nobody even thought about this but you. And we thank God for you on tonight. I don't know if our president is still on the line. I don't know. Unmute and say hello if she is. Sister Cheryl. God bless you. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. I miss you guys so oh. much. Mm. Bless you. But I'm on the mend. All I can do is be patient and let the Lord do His work with me. <laughs> All right. We're not going to have you talk long. I want you to know, know. that we're praying for you and that uh, you're in our prayers and we miss you too. So we thank God for you. That's our president. Amen. We thank God for you. Just keep doing what you're doing and let God heal you. Amen. And he's doing just that. And we thank God for for you. Um, we just want to say again for all of you, Sister Angie, a bumper job, as was stated. Father God in heaven, want to say this, that um, this, third, this Friday, uh, Mother McKnight's son-in-law, Gigi's husband, they're going to be humorized. Uh, they're going to have his um, celebration, ongoing celebration at uh, San Francisco Christian Center. And I believe it's at 11 o'clock, and that's over on Mission Street. Those of you that can make it, let's go there and support Gigi and uh, her baby and also our own uh, Mother McKnight. Um with that funeral on Friday, 11 o'clock, San Francisco Christian Center. Hope to see you there if you can make it. So God bless you. Father God in heaven, we thank you for this night. We thank you for our teaching tonight, God. We ask that you continue you, to strengthen thank her, you, continue to feed her what to feed your people. Lord, and we thank you for thank you, what a wonderful job she done tonight. And we thank you. Now we have more knowledge tonight than we had before because of her and we thank you we thank you for our elders tonight Ella Marcus that's yet on here we thank you for all of our deacons and everyone that's on this line tonight Lord we ask your blessings to be upon our president tonight touch her right where she is we're asking that you just heal her body oh God whatever's aching whatever the problem is you don't already know we asking you to do it then, Lord, just touch the debris, bereaved tonight. Strengthen them right now, oh God. Mother McKnight, Sister Gigi, and the baby, we thank God for them. Just strengthen that family tonight. Let them know that you never made a mistake, and we thank you. Look on Sister T and um, Brother Eric, their aunt that passed away. Look on them tonight, oh God. Oh, 
Well, God, give them strength to carry on, to hold up their head, and to be able to make it, oh God. Mother Miller was in the hospital. Mother Willis, oh God, look on her and them tonight. Touch them right now. Let them rest peacefully, oh God. And we thank you. We thank you for it in advance. Bless everyone under the sound of my voice tonight. Sister Marchie, uh, Sister Marcia, even her uh, little grandbaby, uh, she asked for prayer for that little baby, one year old. Touch that child right now. In the name of Jesus, Lord, and I will be done. Now look on each and every one that's on this line tonight and let them have peace. Let them have joy. Let them be healed, delivered, and set free. In your name we pray. Thank God. Thank and amen. amen. I love you. And there's not a thing in the world you can do about it. God bless you. God bless you, Pastor, and thank you again for the opportunity. God bless you, Sister. God bless you, Pastor. Thank you so much.